So we, we're going to fast forward to the next play. Right now we got fourth and one. It really looks like Washington tried to quick snap you guys on this, but I'm going to just roll it through. And it just seems like he was the first one down in your stance. Was that something that you were prepared for? The quick snap, trying to get that first down? Uh, was it something that you saw on film? You have Chris Peterson holding his head down right now because you just, you know, impacted the game on fourth and one. Yeah, the whole week, you know, we always go over the fourth down package and, and they always quick snap on fourth down and they every, everybody know they're doing the QB steep. So the whole week I was like, I won't be the – because on the film, you can tell, like, the other teams they're playing against never be ready for it. So I was like, I won't be on the on the film, on the cut-up, getting pushed back on, on the fourth and one quick snap situation. And, and as we and as we run this right now, once again, you it, you were definitely ready. As soon as they hiked it, you got that push. And actually, you know, almost a turnover on this play um, with the fumble, with the ball popping out. So um, I, I think that was just a heads up play on your part as far as, you know, just knowing the formation, knowing what they do on fourth and one, trying to get the quick count and you just getting that push up front. Um, there it goes. The ball's out right now. So not only did they didn't get a first down, they actually lost yards on that particular play because of your push up front. Yeah. Uh, so next play, actually, we got the Michigan State game. This is the Red Box Bowl. Um, so once again, got you. You're not over the, the center in this particular uh, play. It seems like you're a little bit wider. Um, on this actual play right now, is that the same too high as? Before? Nah, this this is Different. this a head up, head up on the uh, head up on the guard. So this is two straight up, straight up two technique. Yeah. Yeah, so that's one, just basic, just baby, just basic not back. So not once really. again, we we talked about you know the stuff that necessarily might not show up in the stat sheet. And this was indicative of it right now. You didn't get a tackle for loss, but at the end of the day, you was very disruptive up front and you made the play, you know, kind of stall at the line of scrimmage. Um, and I think you knew it because I see your celebration at the end of it. Just like, okay, I didn't get the tackle, but you know what you did. Look at you just going crazy. Yeah. That whole week they was like, uh, putting on Twitter the, the Pac-12 week and all of that and not physical. So we was all juiced up for this game. Juiced up, juiced up. And, and normally, you know, the Big Ten teams, they, they, they try to come in, they try to overpower you, uh, at least from the running game um, standpoint. Um, and it really seemed like you guys are ready in this particular game and, and you more so than, than others. Um, so right here on this particular play, it looks like you actually shift to the zero technique on this particular play? Because you talk about that, the shift in motion and everything that you guys do um, from a defense scheme. Yeah, I think this was on some, some on my own stuff right here. Just dressing oh. it up. Okay, okay. So this was in- 20, just, yeah, well, Coach Levitt didn't have us moving. So I know this was just me doing something. Okay, all right. And, and, and is that something that, you know, the defensive coordinator or your position coach gave you, gave you freedom to do? Um, or is that was something that you was just ad living in this particular game? Uh, yeah, Coach Levy gave me a lot of freedom. Okay, so once again, getting that push up front, getting that push up front, and you know, just having your linebackers come down downhill and, and filling the gaps on, on that particular play. So in this particular play. Um, is that a zero technique right there? No, I don't know. I think that's a uh, – it's probably a one. A shade? Yeah, shade on the center. Okay. So we got a shade on the center right now. I can't and, really tell. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to get a, a better angle on this particular play. So I'm going to just go ahead and run it. But looks like a shade on the one from from my perspective right now. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a one. It's a one. Yep. So, once again, just shooting that gap and, and just getting that disruption up front. Um, you know, 
not necessarily making the tackle, but, you know, just, just stalling everything up front at the line of scrimmage. So as a defensive tackle, how important is that to, you know, to be involved, even though when you're not racking up the, the stats or racking up the, the statistics that a, a lot of people would like to have? Uh, I think it's like, for me, it's just more of a pride thing knowing that uh, not going to be getting pushed back. Like, I'm playing run. I'm playing run first every time. And once again, we, we see it again on this particular play, you know, just taking on two blocks and kind of, you know, holding things up at the line of scrimmage so your guys can come in and make the play. Um, and, and, and this is what we were talking about. This this stuff doesn't necessarily pop up in the stat, the stat sheet, but, you know, this is important, especially at the defensive tackle position. And now we're going to, I know we had a conversation on our previous episode about Arizona State. Um, you know, you said any game film on Arizona State, that, that, was, that was one of the games that you had that you just felt like you just dominated from beginning to end. So on this particular play, can you walk us through what you're, what you're seeing? And why was Arizona State one of those games on, on, on your schedule that you just feel so confident and comfortable with? Well... This 2019, we got Coach Avalos' scheme going here. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know what's up with Arizona State. I like teams that run the ball, and they try to run the ball. So, oh, and they have Eno Benjamin, and he was one of the leading rushers in the Pac-12. So I knew that it was going to be a heavy run game, or it wanted to be. So yeah, so we got another angle right now. So right now, pre-stat read. What 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 technique are we in at this point, uh, Jordan? Head up on the uh, head up on the guard and the two, two technique right there. So I'm gonna just run us through it. Yep. There you go. Another another one of those sheds. Just shedding the uh, offensive lineman coming down. Wow. Missed the tackle though. Missed the tackle, but once again, your your guys are right behind you, filling in the gaps, making the play. So that's a big that's a big time stop right there. So we got another play. Oh, this look like that screen. No, nah, this ain't that one. Running running backs motioning in. Yeah. So we got another angle at it right now. So appreciate Yeah, so this this is zone blocking versus uh gap. We'll see how the O lineman come. I'm in the two auto, but you'll see how the O lineman come off. This is zone. Zone blocking scheme too high. Yeah, you, you see how they're trying to reach. Everybody yep. trying to reach. Yeah, but set the edge with with the blocker's body, and then tear off. Kind of ugly tear off though. Gotcha. Just just holding your ground, holding your ground. So yeah. just like you said, for, but. You have a you have the zone block you have the zone blocking scheme you have a power blocking scheme, um, you know just being a defensive tackle, you know you 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 have to recognize to know what teams like to do more so than others. Is that something that you you know gain throughout the week uh, through game film and preparation, um, just just watching film or is that coaching? Um, so right now, how how the the film study like is this something that's been was affecting your career? Um, from your freshman season throughout your senior year, um, the, the film room was that was that something that you was a big advocate of? Yeah, uh, you got to be on top of the, the game plan for that week before you start looking into the, the teams, the team scheme. But once you get your game plan and then you and then you get the scheme from scheme of the next team, you really just I just look at the top the top runs and then the, the top blocking schemes because. Team is, is the thing about football, like I just told you, Coach Joe. They're not – everybody want to make it, dress it up and make it different, but it's going – teams are going to do what they do best and, and, and run those plays that work for them. So you just got to look at those plays. And it's obviously going to be changing because, you know, offensive coordinators, they want to they uh, mess up with the tendencies. But it's still going to be a variation of the same type of play with the same scheme. So you just got to catch on to that and, and go from there. Gotcha. So – once again, we got another play going. I think that was pretty much another uh, zone blocking scheme run right there. 
Yeah, this – I don't know what – because the split zone, usually the the Y off is on the opposite side, but they had to – so it might have been an insert, like a trap. Like a trap block? Okay, so I'm yeah, going to so, let you walk us through this play. So pre-snap, what, what technique are we lined up in? I'm in a – I'm in the head up, but – we the defense is just slant, slant to the left. So that's why I already was stepping that way before. Okay. See? So you step to the left. Yeah. And then just to get knocked back. I see the I see the tight end coming. So I'm like, all right, I might as well just post up. Cause if he hit me, then it's gonna be me, him, and the running back all in one spot. But then I start stabbing the stabbing the center and the the wide off throws. So I just the running back ran right into me. So getting that pushback, getting that initial pushback, nowhere to go for the running back, and pretty much you just eat him up at the point of contact right there. Yeah. And then getting a little, getting a little physical after the play as well. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. So uh, another play. This time, I'm gonna let you walk us through this because this is the actual screen play that you you was referenced to earlier. So. Uh, pre-snap, uh, what technique we're in again? To uh, the defense calling for a slant to the to the right, so I'm, that's why I'm already taking that big step to the right. Once I once I realize it's a pass, but the O line not even like looking at me. You can see how they're looking out. Yep. So then I'm like, that's when I took a gather step, and then I thought he was gonna throw the screen that way, but I he looked back, and then that's when I knew it was a screen. So don't even look at the quarterback no more. Just find a receiver. Once you diagnose that, break down. Run it down. The leg. Yeah. Got the legs. Got the tackle. Now, I just want to run this back, Jordan, because I just want to emphasize the fact that I just want to emphasize the fact that where you're lined up at and where you run to the ball at. So you ran to the hashes on a, on a, on a wide receiver screen, you know, 300 plus pounds, not, not a lot of guys can do that. So once again, that you said that is just something that you recognize just from film study and, you know, formation recognition that you just knew it was a screen coming. And once you diagnosed the play, you know, your instincts just took over. So is that what we're seeing right here? Yeah, once like I said, once I took the step, the O lineman not even looking at me. Because if it's a pass, if it's a real pass, O lineman always gonna stare at where they're trying to block. So that's when I knew I was like, oh, they're not looking at me. And then I seen the quarterback look, look, and then look back, and I knew the screen. So just run it down. Um, yeah. So this one to me is one of my favorite plays um, that I that that I put together for you as far as, you know, just getting that initial push up front and running down the line of scrimmage and, and just making a play, you know, not no, not not necessarily, you know, in the trenches, but, you know, on the outside. So I, I love this play and I'm going to just let it run and then I'm going to rewind and I'm going to have you walk us through it. Yep, zone blocking scheme again. So, yeah, so... Uh... That, that was definitely one of my favorite plays. Um, so we're just going to run that one back, and I'll just have you walk us through it. So right now. Got the zone blocking scheme. We got the – first off, like I told you, they're not going to put two tight ends on one side and not run to it unless it's a, sl a splice, a split zone. But they got two tight ends on that side, so you're expecting it to go that way. So you're already having it in the, in the back of your mind, two tight ends, you know, this is the strong side. I feel like this the, the, the running play is going to go this way. So you kind of, you know, you have that in the back of your mind. Um, and then as the play start, you know, just yep. like you said, zone blocking scheme and you're running downhill. Just showing that motor off right there. I, I you did, Yeah, I didn't get a dance after that one. Uh, yeah, you can, you can even see me looking at the tight ends before they snuck the ball right there. But, yeah. And, and, and right now, blocking. right now, you, you're still – your eyes are Behind still on the, the running back. Your eyes are still on the running back. I, I think that's the key that a lot of players don't understand um, because, for example, say if you wasn't necessarily looking at the running back, say if your head was down and you were trying to, you know, disengage the block, 
what disadvantage and what matter of fact, what advantage is that you have by looking through the block and looking at the running back at this point? Well, first you got to get a, a established hand placement before you look away from your target. So right here, I already got my hands in his chest, so I'm able to control him and look through the the armpit via the neck. Coaches like to use either one of those, but either one works. So once you once you get established hand placement, you got him under control. You start tracking the back through through the armpit or through the via the neck. Right here, I'm looking because if we if the edge was if the edge see he getting double team, so it, it, it's a good edge. And then I just scrape over the top. Scrape over the top. Yeah. And on this particular play, it just seems like everyone, you know, maintained their gap integrity um, because it was nowhere for the running back to go in that one. And just like you say, you scraped exactly. over the top and you ran downhill to make a play. So, Thank you for listening to American Football Stories podcast. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, American Football Stories. We are working to grow our network on YouTube and we'll love to have you subscribe. You can find us also on Apple Podcasts, on Twitter, at American FB Story, and on our website, AmericanFootballStories.com. I am Robert Parker. My co-host is Nick Newson. This has been another episode of American Football Stories.